I welded this um, section on the rear cab um, section, so I welded this little rust repair around here. We've got a depression here where um, I don't know the weld got it too hot, I guess. So I've um, welded a washer on there. Made myself a uh, oh, it's not really made it. This is a snap-on uh, dent puller. So you hook the. Uh, they might look like two ten pegs joined together because they are. And you uh, slide that on there like that. Get this thing, which um, I'm not sure what this is, but anyway, hook that on there. And just whack it up like that, and it'll pull that dent out. Whack it up like that, pull the dent out. Works a treat. Arthur, Arthur would be proud of me. Trying to break up the uh, work a bit fixing up the panels and welding and blah 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 so I thought I might do a uh, a will it run I had a mate come over yesterday and we were sort of looking at the things we sort of struggled to work out which is a good cruiser and which is a bad one but this is the donor cruiser which I got um, for the rear cab section and the roof which is still uh, in this chemical bath in the backyard in the molasses so we might fire this up there's no real reason why it wouldn't go there's no radiator no alternator but it has got a dizzy the starter motor's there it does turn i know it's not uh, seized um a couple of spark plugs are missing i just put some old plugs in it just to seal it up and i oiled it to keep it going it has got oil in it black as well black shall we say it's black um Uh, the Scarby, I had, I just sprayed a bit of WD-40 on it, that's why I put the plastic bag over it. It's seized. That, uh, valve there, it just don't move. So I might, um, I might give it another spray of WD-40 and try and free that up. But other than that, I think we can get it going. So I'd say uh, this is going to be a, a will it run video. So uh, I'll work on the carby. Is it going to need fuel? What do we need? Fuel, spark, compression. We'll get those three things happening. Working on the uh, rear cab section, we've got this one uh, mocked up, I suppose. I've got all the pieces set in there, just tacked in. And um, what I'm going to actually do is untack them cut them apart I'll sandblast them all use my uh, weld through primer I've got to locate I've got to fit it on the body locate the uh, the post like that one and then weld it up and try and keep the heat out of it because this one which I would basically finished or tried to finish I'm um, I'm cutting it all back out it's uh, got too much distortion. It distorted in here. I did something stupid. I tried to build it up with weld and that just made it distort more. And um, I just can't get it. It's not bad. But uh, that's that should be against the ruler. But that's probably, I don't know, two and a half, three mil. Which is not bad, but oh man. So anyway, I cut a, um, a bigger section out of the old girl. So I'll uh, cut a good bit of channel out of that and just stick it back in here and have another crack at this. I'm sort of making the whole repair bigger than it needed to be, but it's, uh, it's got out of control. Can't straighten that up. So, uh, yeah, this time I'll just tack it a little bit more slower. I know what to do, I just didn't do it. <laughs> no, anyway, that's where I'm at. I've cut all the old repair out and um, just tacked in this, um, like the structural section. 
sandblasted it off the old ute got that in there then after once I get that in here um, like perfect then I'll cut more of this body section out and put that in there but last time I made the mistake of putting the structural section of the body in all in at one time all still joined so this time I've separated it I'll get this section in there get the locating pins in from both sides put it on the uh, the donor cab line it all up tack them in the locating pins then put the body on and then cap it off the thing on top I've got a bit of body um, out of the original that I can use. Obviously I can't use that part of it, but the, the other end of it's all right. It's got a bit of a hole there where the spot will pull through. That's all right, that'll sandblast up good. It's got plenty of thickness to it. So that'll do for there. And we'll finally get this, uh, Rear cab section done. Okay, man, there was nothing wrong with it. It's about like 10 hours on it, I reckon, already. But doing this repair twice was a bit of a... Oh, it's a learning curve. You just got to take your time, eh? Don't get too much heat into it. Anyway. Oh, good. One side, um... Completed. That was a smaller side, and uh, this is the side I'm redoing. Man, talk about a can of worms. This is it. Anyway, I've got a patch ready. I've tacked it in already. Cut it the same size. Unpicked, and I'm in. She goes. Got him tacked in. Now, try and stop the uh, panel from warping. So the rear cab is um, in the epoxy primer. All uh, the body repairs have been done. Um, it's good. I'm quite happy with that. So that's all I'm going to do with that at this stage and sort of store it with the other the other parts and now um, next thing is I want to um, strip the driver's side door off the 67 and then when I pull the turret and the grill surround out of the molasses swimming pool I'll put the door in so I'll strip the door get it ready and then I'm um, going to the finishing the roof off once I get it out of the molasses I'm interested to see how all that went it's been there for mm, I think maybe four weeks but anyway apparently it only eats the rust and not the metal so we'll see just pulled my first few items out of the uh, molasses bath. Man, I couldn't be happier. Didn't really show you when these went in, but they were pretty rusty. And the little side benefit is that most of the most of the paints come off as well. So I've got with those this flash rusting. So I just um, pressure wash these, and they're all bright steel, and they flash rust pretty much straight away. But um, that's all right. I've got some phosphoric acid or deoxidine. I'll hit them with that, with the scour, and that should, that should protect them. Get rid of the rest of the paint. So I'm emptying out the uh, molasses bath so I can get the turret out, and then I want to put the um, the doors in off the old girl. Actually, I'm going to use the doors off the donor car because they're just they're just less work. So that's the plan. So I've uh, given those parts a scour with Scotch-Brite and a bit of, um, I think it's sulfuric acid to that, that's a seat side panel I got off the donor car and my two grill surrounds, one off the 67 one off the 70 model. And I don't know, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos about metal preparation and rust and blah blah blah, but I don't know if it's a combination of 50 year old Toyota paint 
and um, Toyota Steel and Australian Molasses, but there's not an easier way to prepare the metal for paint. It, no sanding, brings it back great. It's almost like a, I don't know, not a galvanic finish, but it's just back to brand new metal. It's bloody great. So next is uh, to get the roof out of the bath. You can see how she come up. Got the, uh, this is the right hand door off the donor vehicle, stripped out, ready for uh, the molasses bath. It's got a few problems. I can't believe how uh, the stress cracks in the metal. It's had a hard life, that car. It's all um, split apart here. The rust is not too bad. Not too bad at all. That's the bottom of her. I left that little bit of rubber seal on there because I'm not sure if the molasses might take it off as well. It's been doing a great job. So the plan is to um, prepare both the doors like this, uh, ready for the molasses bath over there in the corner. Just painted my grills around before and um then i'll pull the turret out the roof out and drop these in these in, in for leave these in for a month while i'm working on the turret and a few other things just about to get the uh roof out of the molasses pit that's what it looks like don't smell too good either In there. It's a good news. Man, it's heavy. Well, it worked good around the edges. I don't think it worked too good in the middle where it was face down. Anyway, I'll um, pressure wash it. Let's see how it comes up. I'm calling that a win. It's hard to see. But um, it's best back to clean metal in most places. The problem is I've had it in the pond face down like that and the centre part didn't, for some reason it didn't work. The outside edges, I mean it's flash rusting now but it's back to clean metal and it's such a good job. That was a little repair I did, I don't remember from the centre hole. But um, I think I'm going to put it back in. I'll put it back in with this side facing up. and. Um, the pond's deep enough, I'll be able to put that driver's side door in on top of it, just slightly. So, I'll try that. I think the trick is to um, put it in there for a few weeks, take it out, clean it up, move it around, then put it back in. Anyway, we'll learn it.